Hello and welcome to today's short video. In this video, we are going to look at Revelation chapter 13, who is the leopard-like beast of Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 brings us face to face with a great religious crisis. The great controversy between Saturn and Jesus, which began in heaven, continues through Saturn's agent, the beast, and God's faithful servants. John says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power, and his seat, and great authority. Who is the beast? According to the book of Daniel 7, 17 and 23, the beast represents the king or kingdom. The Bible speaks in this wise. These great beasts which are four are four kings which shall rise out of the earth. The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Have you understood that the beast is a kingdom? Now you know. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power, and his seat, and great authority. Now the Bible shows it was like unto a lion, a lion which represents the king of Babylon in Daniel 7. And it was like unto a leopard, a leopard which represented the kingdom of Greece in Daniel 7. And it looked like a bear, or it had legs like of a bear, which represent the kingdom of Medo Persia in Daniel 7. So the beast of the kingdom of Revelation 13 combines all the characteristics of the four beasts in Daniel chapter 7. Babylon was the lion which ruled by the power of worldly grandeur. Babylon's crowning sin was that of imputing all her wisdom and power onto false gods. You remember the story in Daniel chapter 3 where the king made a big image and he commanded all in his kingdom to bow down and worship it. But the three Hebrew boys said, we'll not bow ourselves in worshiping the image which has no life in it which is not God. The second came the Bend of Persia was a monarchy of the most absolute form and their laws changed not. Daniel 6, 8 tells us when the decree had been signed by the Medio Persian kingdom, it changes not. Next came the Greek. The Greek culture and intellectual development carried men farther away from the simple truth of God's word than any form of religion or any oppression from the government. Philosophy entered into the church through this kingdom, the kingdom of Greece. And finally, the devil combined the strength of all preceding kingdoms in Rome, a false religion, a tyrannical government, upheld and propagated by a flattering, insinuating false system of education. So false system of education, philosophy, worship of gods or images, and the character of not changing or claiming unfallibility were all combined in the beast of Revelation chapter 13. The characteristics of the leopard-like beast are in this wise. This leopard-like beast had many of the characteristics from each of the four beasts of Daniel 7. Let us now consider some of them. The beast of Daniel 7 rises out of the sea. The Bible tells us in Revelation 17, 15, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sowest, where the whole sitteth, are the peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. This one means that the kingdom, which is described in Revelation 13, grows out of a populated area. The second characteristic is that the kingdom in Revelation 13 has seven heads. This constitutes all the heads of the beast of Daniel 7 combined together to borrowing features from all the four kingdoms of Daniel 7 in Revelation 13. This king or this kingdom has ten horns like the fourth beast 
of Daniel 7, which is pagan Rome. The fourth, like a leopard, fit as a bear, mouth of a lion, it is a composite of all the beasts of Daniel 7. It continues the spirit and practices all these powers. And finally, it was given power by the dragon. Revelation 12, 7 to 9 tells us the dragon is Satan, the devil, and that old serpent. These features, as historically most Protestants have believed, represent papacy which took over the power and seat and authority that the Roman Empire once held. John continues, And I saw one of his head as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Papacy was given time to rule the world for twelve sixty years, which the Bible mentioned to be forty two months. After the expiry of the 42 months, it brought us to 1798 when the papacy received a deadly wound. The infliction of the deadly wound points to the downfall of papacy in 1798 when the French general Parthia took the ruling pope Pius IV prisoner. The pope died in exile one and a half years later. All the world thought this could end the papacy, but God's word said no his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. Paul states plainly that the man of sin will continue until the second advent. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 8. The Bible shows that this beast blasphemed the name of the Lord, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and then that dwelt in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and, to over, and power was given unto him over all kindred and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Revelation 13, 3-8 What does it mean to blaspheme? The Catholic Church embowers its priests to forgive sins, but the scripture says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2 5. Jesus was accused by the Jews of blasphemy. Why? Because he forgave sins. Why do this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God only? Mark 2 7. Jesus, being God, could forgive sin. For man, any man to claim the right to forgive sin, is blasphemy. In place of the ministration of Jesus Christ in the heavenly sanctuary, in Hebrews 7-9, the Catholic Church has instituted the idolatrous ordinance of mass. In this way, it has blasphemed God's sanctuary. So to blaspheme is to claim to forgive sin or simply to claim to take the place of God upon the earth and your man. The Catholic Church also turned to be a persecutor. The Bible says this power is further identified in that it could make war with the saints and overcome them. This was done with a relentless fury of all during its reign. At, at least 50 million of God's true children were destroyed by the direction of this power during the Middle Ages. Furthermore, all people worship this power except a small number, those who have the names written in the Book of Life. During her time, this is the time that we had great reform, like John Hus being burned. It is the time we had uh, the Waldenses being persecuted and sought for in the wilderness, and many people were killed other son asunder. Persecution would be coming soon as it was in the old world. To the very close of time, he will carry forward the work of deception, and the liberator declares, also referring to papacy, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. Revelation 13, 8, 
in both the old and the new, the papacy will receive homage in honor paid to the Sunday institution that rests solidly upon the authority of Roman Church. Who will you now serve? Will you serve God or will you serve this beast? And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. For more information, please keep watching our short videos. May God bless you.